Hey guys, and welcome back to another quick review. It's me again, Ben, and this time I'm looking story at Stories The Path of Destinies by Spearhead Games on PS4, though it's also available on PC. Now, Stories is a hack and slash adventure game, but what really sets it apart from the other games in the genre is its narrative style. Um, basically, Stories hey, is a sort of choose your own adventure game with um, picking choices that affect the levels you're going to play and how the story unfolds. And then it actually does this really cool trip, trick that loops the narrative around so you kind of get a chance to replay the same events and make other choices, all of which will affect the overall outcome of the story. It's a really clever little mechanic. Uh, and really sets the game apart um, from the others in the genre. The other thing that really makes stories stand out is it's gorgeous. It is a stunningly beautiful game. It has a locked-in isometric point of view, which means the artist could really go to town with different perspectives and depth of field and a really vibrant colour palette. Um, you're basically this fox, swashbuckling guy, this rebel, this vo this rogue, this vagabond who is a guy called Renardo, and you're kind of going around fighting in this rebellion, trying to overthrow the evil frog emperor. Um, it's a lot of fun, it's really silly, it's good fantasy, uh, and on top of the whole sort of choose your own adventure mechanic, they also did this thing a little bit like Bastion, if you remember, from the guys of Supergiant, and basically Bastion uh, did this thing with narration that would narrate exactly what you were doing while you were doing it. Now it's not quite as in-depth as that in stories, but what it does has is a single guy doing the voiceover, telling you the story, it, but, and he makes it feel like he's reading the story to you from a book, because he's not just doing the voiceover for the narration, he's doing voiceover for all the characters, putting on different voices, it really feels like you're being told a bedtime story, but you're getting to sort of make the choices as it goes along. It really made me think of those choose your own adventure novels I remember reading as a kid, um, and it was just so much fun. And the guys, uh, the guys at Spearhead, um, you know, in Montreal, in uh, in Canada, really doing something kind of cool here with this, and really a lot of fun. It's super charming. Um, it's super engaging. I mean, the combat, which is at the kind of the core mechanics of the game, is fairly simple. Most of the attacks and counters, as you can see here, are done on uh, one button, on the square button on the PS4 controller. Uh, you have a hook mechanic as well. Uh, but then there's leveling up as well that goes on in this game. So it kind of, there is a depth to it. The accessibility is, is really kind of easy going and slowly brings in these new mechanics. The combat never gets that complicated. And even in the most hectic fights, you never feel like you're out of control. And that only gets easier, in a way, as the game gets harder, because you're going through and you're leveling up your abilities and you're improving your abilities. There's a big old skill tree, so you can really kind of customise Renardo how you want him to be. And in addition to that, as you might have seen at the right at the beginning of the video, there are mechanics involving um, the swords you can carry. You have different special swords, which are kind of elemental, uh, and they're really good uh, and different and they sort of change up combat as well as acting as keys to secret areas of the game which encourage replayability even more because you can go back to the beginning of the game at the end of each of the story story segments um, you can then go back to the beginning and you can choose obviously different choices and go to different areas or you can choose the same choices because you know where these secret doors are so you can do this to like use your special sword keys basically to open up new areas to get new upgrades to get new bits of story it's layers upon layers of what is a very simple kind of game at the start it becomes complicated but it never feels overwhelming and it's all kind of put together in this beautiful wrapper which made it a really compelling fun experience for me a nice light experience but like I said with these hidden depths that make you want to come back for more and more I found myself going I'm just gonna play this 20 minutes I'm just gonna play this half an hour but I'll be two hours later I'd still be playing it uh, and finding out new stories I don't think at the end of the day it's not the longest experience one playthrough in one story will only take you maybe an hour and 90 minutes, maybe less, depending on how good you are. But then you're going to loop back around, you're going to do it again, you're going to play it from a different perspective. It's different. And I don't hear a lot of people talking about this game. Um, and I think, considering it's a relatively small team, it's done on Unreal Engine 4, it looks fantastic, it plays really well. It has a couple of loading time er uh, problems, it's a bit slow to load. But, you know, it's an Unreal game, it's a new Unreal, and, you know, the, this team is a small team, getting it optimised for consoles is going to be a challenge. But, you know, end of the day, it's a really nice package, a really good price, and I think it's definitely worth checking out on the PS4. So, because of all that, I give the somewhat surprising stories of the Path of Destinies 4 stars out of 5. 